Sir, can I get your opinion on commitment in relationships? He swanned off. Classic. <laughs> Hello and welcome to this very special episode of Agony Lena. We are here today at Shakespeare's birthplace in Stratford-upon-Avon. The man who invented the sonnet. And this video is also sponsored by Babel, who are teaching me the language of love but more about that later now if you haven't watched this series before this is the series where you send me in your problems your questions your existential dread and i try my best with my very limited knowledge and wisdom to answer them um, today we're doing a very special love themed episode so let's hear what your probs are what your agonies are and see if we can do anything about it before we move on, can I just talk about how cute this library is? Look at it, it's still open, it's still a functioning library. I can't, I can't, I can't, I just can't. <laughs> I want to answer these two questions together because I think they overlap and also I think it's cute to have little couples, little couples of answers with couples of questions because, you know, Valentine's Day. Blah. Um, okay, here are the two questions. One is, how is romantic love different from platonic or friend love if you remove the sexual attraction? And the other question is, can exes honestly be friends? Okay, I've been thinking a lot about this because I honestly have talked a lot in videos about how I think there are a lot of crossovers between friendships and relationships and we don't talk enough about like the value of building on a friendship and really working on it and also friendship breakups and how equally painful they can be to romantic or sexual breakups um so i do really think that there is a lot of crossover but when i've been thinking about this a lot especially with regards to craig um is that uh, who do you want at your hospital bed do you know what i mean if you wake up after something really horrible happens who do you want to see at the end of the bed if you have a really bad day at work who do you want to immediately come home to and talk to about it and and who do you want like this this is kind of dark but like at some point we will, will lose our parents and who do you who's the first person you want to talk to and to be your family when that happens and i think that is a slight difference between um a kind of very close committed couple kind of love versus like a platonic friendship where you kind of move in and out of each other's lives and you report to each other about your life but you're not really sharing a life so i think that is that is one of the differences that is relevant even if you take sex out of it and where that relates to ex because obviously like can can somebody who was a lover be a friend in my early 20s I would have said yeah what's the problem of course my optimistic self a little bit jaded now mainly because I have more exes <laughs> and one problem I think I am um, hit up against as a lot of my friends have is that the way the very nature of a relationship breaking down or ending is usually because the traits that that person has displayed are often not traits you'd want in a friend and I think that's probably one of the problems that we we expect people to be different than they are at, when a relationship ends and we can often see traits in them that we wouldn't want in any anybody in our lives whether we were having sex with them or not so i think that's something to bear in mind i'm not i'm not like haven't let go of the the reality that sometimes it can work uh, and i've i know very few very rare cases where it has worked but generally i think i'm jaded now it's probably not a possibility in most cases i'd have to know your situation though but you know that's me <laughs> call me jaded jade Look, New Year, all well and good, but I actually think Valentine's Day is the day to really check in with yourself and perhaps start anew. Move on from past her, set new goals, explore new things, so whether you are with someone or a single Pringle, it's good to just get your head in the game. Be like, this day makes me feel weird, but how do I become a person that I would like to date? If one of those new things that you might want to try is maybe learning a language, something you've always been curious about, the team at Babbel have my stamp of approval. I have been learning French with them recently, the language of love, and as somebody with a short attention span and an incredibly unpredictable schedule, it has been perfect. Some simple, reliable stuff to just dip into when I can, so whether it's 15 minute lessons or podcasts or games or they even have babble live classes it's actually made me do it i think the best part for me is that it's not just like this multiple choice thing you can just click through and forget instantly i'm looking at you lena they actually get you to build words and sentences and they have voice recognition so they can give you pointers on your pronunciation 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 they check you saying it right vous êtes collègue le metro you have a choice of all of these sexy, sexy languages. And they have over 150 linguists working constantly on keeping those courses up to date and relevant. So you're learning fast, 
thoroughly and you're also learning real life vocabulary so you sound like you're from this century and not some kind of 18th century elderly man what really gets me going about learning a new language is it just opens up this whole new group of people that you can talk with interact with make friends with and even maybe <gasps> fall in love if you want to have a nosy and find out more, there is a link in the description where you can find a special offer right now. 30% off their six month memberships, 12 month memberships and their lifetime access. So, as the French might say, fantastique. Très bien. Très bien. I'm here by our old friend Lady Macbeth to talk red flags and green flags. This is a question somebody asked. Now I'd say categorically, red flag, uh, asking you to murder somebody. <laughs> Not, not the one, definitely toxic. Um, another red flag, this is just something I've observed, an uncritical or creepily close relationship with their mother. Not father, I don't really seem to, like in my, in my data collection, doesn't seem to really affect how good or bad the person is, but I'm not saying red, maybe it's an orange flag, <laughs> at least. Um, another red flag is people who don't change their minds that much, can either tell stories from their past where they thought a different way and then change their minds, nor show any signs of wanting to change their minds, even about small opinions uh, when you first kind of meet them. I definitely say if people don't have experience of having changed their minds before, there's definitely gonna be some rocky road ahead. And the third one, people who don't recognize that you have your own separate identity to them. This can come in the form of not really knowing the difference between your shared friends your friends and their friends like not understanding that dynamic and those boundaries uh, and also just like not understanding that you have a separate history to them so being weird about you having had in exes or other partners um, or like a life before them those those can show up in very small ways at the beginning but can kind of uh, escalate as you go on so definitely watch out for those on a more cheerful note green flags people who are excited genuinely excited about your triumphs not just like oh yeah well done that's, that sounds good like they are also experiencing the joy because they should be that's a massive green flag for me another green flag is people who just care about stuff it doesn't need to be the stuff that you care about but somebody who has like an obsession or a thing or like some kind of topic that they just care a lot about that they're unashamedly and non-sarcastically committed to i love that i think that's kind of hot and then the third Third green flag, people who like this channel. Lena Norms fans, definitely a goer, especially if they're in the Gumption Club. It's a massive green flag from me. Don't you think Lady Macbeth? She agrees, she agrees. She knows, she knows what she did wrong. You've changed your mind, haven't you? I picked this question because I think there's nothing more romantic than logistics. Uh, this question is how not to fall into gender roles when I'm in a hetero relationship and and how to how to break our parents' bad habits. So I was thinking about this a lot and I think that if you perceive your parents like bad habits or bad gender roles as like really negative you have to have at some point perceived that there was a loss there that somebody wasn't happy somebody wasn't fulfilled or that things just like weren't working optimally like what if it was like your dad who was in charge of the bills but occasionally like you ran out of money or like it wasn't running smoothly there must have been something you perceived in that to have not been working very well apart from the fact that obviously we don't want to default to those things if they don't benefit all of the humans involved i think that what has been interesting um is that in my relationship with craig we have kind of fallen into some gender roles and sometimes I think like, oh god that's bad but then some of them are just like body roles like Craig has a bigger body than me so I let him carry the big stuff <laughs> you know he could have dated a really tall buff girl with loads of like agility and then they wouldn't have had to fall into those gender roles but soz I just can't carry boxes um <laughs> but there's other things that we've fallen into just because it's also just what we want to do like it's a it sparks joy I do most of the cooking uh, but I'm also really really bad at cleaning um, but kind of on purpose so that Craig does it but <laughs> Craig does a lot of the cleaning um, so I guess we kind of share that gender role and also he does all the driving there's lots of gender roles that we fall into but what I think is Im important when you're thinking about those things is that they're done because of your skill set and because of what you actually enjoy or prefer doing um, and that anyone can opt out of their, their role at any point if anybody wants to say hey I don't actually fancy taking on this regardless of gender they're allowed to opt out or negotiate a swap at any time so I think it's as long as they, they stay fluid throughout your life and you don't fall into those ruts and like make sure that they stay I fall into a lot of st stereotypes within my own gender as well and I've had to unpack those and check in with the ones to make sure that they are also just something that I'm willingly doing so why wouldn't it not be the same with a relationship if you're in a heterosexual relationship you also have to check in and just make sure that some of them are also just fun for you 
also can we talk about the fact that this tree is wearing a jumper <laughs> love stratford <laughs> love it i adore it we are currently sitting on the steps of the swan theater where i once performed a very very bad version of pericles so <laughs> Trauma memories aside, let's get on with the next question. I've been told I shouldn't care about politics and dating. You can't agree on everything when dating, but politics really matters to me. Is that so much to ask? Oh, I have so much to say on this. Okay, so yeah, I guess it's good to like have an Overton window of people that you bring into your life who have different opinions to you on how to fix the world. But I think there are some kind of political persuasions that basically say, I don't want to fix the world. I think the world is fine as it is, no problems here. That's a problem in itself. <laughs> people's political persuasions can also answer questions like, what do I think people deserve? What does deserve even mean? Even if people are lazy, do they deserve to die? How do I think poor people should be treated? Do experts matter? Those are really important questions and I think you should agree on those things and I think if you have similar answers to them you are going to fall within a similar political persuasion. It's, that's just going to be the way that it is. And I think you need to agree on whether the world needs to be fixed and if you disagree on how that happens and the way that happens but you both have good intent for humans then I don't think that is a deal breaker but those questions are very very important. Okay, here's what I'm calling instant bullshit on. <laughs> Do you have to love yourself before you can be in a relationship with somebody and let them love you? Um, it's like a complete no. I think that's kind of like, how would anybody ever be in a relationship <laughs> if that was true? I think that's true in certain circumstances in that if you are somebody who needs to go and do the work on yourself because you either act behave badly in in relationships like you have a pattern of not being nice or or flipping on the people that you're with or you have a, a bit of a history of getting into relationships with people who show some of those red flags and you're getting into relationships with people that that don't treat you nicely then i think it is good to intentionally go away and have some time on your own to work that out but i mean where's the fun in a relationship if you can't help each other fix your completely broken bits i think obviously like if you don't if you can't accept other people's love for you that's a problem but that there's, there's a difference between tolerating yourself knowing that you're worthy of respect and that you're a human and therefore have value versus like loving yourself being really into yourself which i'm not a lot of the time um and i also think like what's useful and what you can bring to a relationship isn't to say like i've actually worked everything else out myself already so i don't really need you i just like like having you around there's no fun in that but but what is helpful is if you can come into a relationship being like here are all the different ways that i'm broken that i'm aware of <laughs> <laughs> just so you know <laughs> um i think that's always good to be self-aware but i think it's the difference between self-love and self-awareness and i just want to reassure you that self-love is something that isn't that doesn't happen every day it's like being happy it's like we're not always ecstatic to be alive but we do have like a base level of content or a base level of peace and that is very different from like self-love or self-confidence but that's just my opinion you can tell me i'm wrong below <laughs> Okay, quick fire round, let's go. How do you know when you should break up with somebody? When you can picture somebody else loving them more? When you can literally picture them with somebody and be like, somebody would really adore that about that person. I'd be happy for them if they did. I am awful at gifts, but it's my partner's love language. How can I show him I love him? you could make the gift your love language so if your language love language is quality time give him a gift of a day out if your love language is words of affirmation write him a little letter gifts can come in any form they don't need to be capitalist and they don't need to be physical speaking of capitalism valentine's day capitalist gimmick or romantic opportunity i just want to take a moment to say that every capitalist gimmick can become an opportunity of some kind we don't have to live in this world where it's like capitalism completely cancel delete we can't we have to kind of subvert it sometimes we do live within it we can't have a no fun allowed sign over anything that is vaguely capitalist because we will get so sad so i think while we're trapped in this um, being able to subvert is much more powerful evolution not revolution and when it comes to valentine's day engaging with it in a way that means like it's not just about romantic love it's about community love man or it's about like platonic love parental love um subverting it in those ways and just making it more an excuse to celebrate other people 
is really nice but i'm always on team subvert <laughs> do you believe in soulmates absolutely freaking not and when i think about the soulmates thing i think one about the fact that most of my good relationships have been built not born not stumbled on in a forest and also the fact that i don't think about that when it comes to friendships you know when you have like your best friend from childhood or like your group of pals you don't think well, what if i was actually living in birmingham and i met a completely different set of friends like would i have better friends there like no you don't think that because you you've grown with those people those are the people that that have, that have found you in your life and that yeah there could be other universes where you're friends with other people but that we're not encouraged to think that way we're not encouraged to optimize our friendships and find the one best friend in the world in the way that we are with romantic relationships so it's a no uh definitively <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me in Stratford. It's been a cute little date. Thanks for coming along. If you have any answers to the questions that we have been asked, please leave them in the comments below. I want to know what your answers are because I'm not the definitive knowledge on anything. I know nothing. Who am I? <laughs> yeah. Thank you for coming on this very cute date to Stratford-upon-Avon with me. Thank you so much to Babbel for teaching me the language of love and sponsoring this video. Um, please let me know your thoughts below on what your answers would be to these questions because obviously, who am I but just one person? Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit any knowledge. Uh, so you tell me if I'm wrong below. If you want to watch more Agony Lena videos, they are here. Or maybe you might like some of these videos. Thank you so much for the Gumption Club for making these videos possible frog snog out <laughs>